Welcome from the Dad and Tobago to our News 4 report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited and the Ministry of Communications. I'm Nicola Barito. Let's take a look at the headlines. TNTech explains cause of Good Friday blackout at Joint Select Committee. Trinidad and Tobago jumps in World Press Freedom Rankings. And governments of Trinidad and Tobago and Jamaica working on making Caribbean Airlines viable. Thank you for joining us to our top story. It's been three months since the nationwide blackout occurred on Good Friday this year. Today, the issue was raised during the Joint Select Committee meeting on state agency TNTech. While March 29, 2013, the day of the national blackout, went down in the history book as an unforgettable one, ensuring contingency measures are in place remains paramount to the Trinidad and Tobago Electricity Commission. The question was raised during the Joint Select Committee meeting by sitting member Planning and Development Minister Dr. Botiwari. We've had instances of outages, some of it having to do with um, problems at the point of the transmission, but some of them also having to do with the flow of gas into the system. Um, how much in control is TNTech? Um, how much can, in control is TNTech now for these two um, eventualities which we have already experienced. Um, well, how much more in control are you now to, to give some assurance that um, perhaps it may not happen again? Since then, measures put in place include insulation of additional manpower. General Manager of the State Agency, Kelvin Ramsuk, explained the steps taken to prevent the reoccurrence of such an event. T and Tech is finally responsible to the customer. The customer sees T and Tech. So we recognize that. So anything that happens, they wouldn't look at any other entity as much as they would look at T and Tech. And therefore, one of our mandates is to ensure if there are any other agencies in the provision of whatever services they provide to TNTech, Tech, there are any shortcomings, we have to insist and we have to, put, we have, which we have been doing in terms of trying to get these agencies to come up to the appropriate standard. What we have done so far is that we have met with all those agencies. I have also had direct contact with all those agencies. So let's start off with, the, with, with, with Phoenix Yas. Phoenix Gas has written me, they have indicated that they have sorted out the issue, there was a failure of a component in the control system, they have monitored, they have replaced the item, they have monitored the item, they have confirmed that the item is working properly, there are no issues there. In parallel to that, the National Gas Company has created what they call an alternate feed. The Phoenix Park development is in progress right now, however, what they have done is that the bypass arrangement was not manned. The bypass arrangement now is 24 hour manned. So that, that aspect of it basically has been dealt with to some extent. He adds that a TGO plant located in Labre will soon be added on the grid as a source of separate power supply for the entire nation. One of the biggest issues, and I suppose it will come up, is to get the total capacity out of the Trinidad Generation Unlimited plant. The Trinidad and Tobago Electricity Commission, after March 29th, a number of discussions did in fact take place. We have a mandate. We have to deliver that in six months. Right? We are well within compliance of our mandate and as of the first quarter of 2014, we will be able to get the full capacity out of TGU onto the grid. Meanwhile, Mr. Ramsuk has assured that additional supply will soon be routed through the commissioning of new substations located in Gandhi Village. Given the existing infrastructure um, we have right now, we are unable to get, because of the, the capacity of the, both, not, only, not the overhead lines, but rather the transformer capacity, we are unable to get to take full power from TGU. We have put mechanism in place to, 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 to deal with that issue of getting full power from TGU, and as a result of that, we have already ordered transformers, right? The transformers have already been ordered. They have already been, um, they, they expected to be delivered, leave by October to be delivered by the end of the year. We have to construct a Gandhi village substation and divert overhead lines in the Gandhi village area into that substation. The issue of the blackout prompted the need for renewable energy resources to be tapped into. As the Planning and Development Minister pointed out, many investors expressing interest in this alternative. From time to time, people come with investment, 
proposals that have to do with the generation of alternative energy, either solar or wind. And the question that they keep asking is whether, if they were able to generate that electricity, TNTEC would uh, purchase the supply. What is their policy position on TNTEC as far as that is concerned? Well, because it has implications for the kind of investments we can encourage. The general manager responded by stating that TNTEC continues to look at viable renewable energy options, even though cost of implementation appears overwhelming. He assures talks are continuous with various stakeholders, including the Public Utilities Ministry and Energy Ministry. At this stage, though, we, we of course are encouraging renewables very much so. I want to make that abundantly clear. We ourselves have a number of renewable projects, so we are encouraging renewables. So certainly. Kimberly Ram Kalawan, News 4. Meanwhile, overhead power lines will soon be a thing of the past. This as TNTEC seeks to implement underground lines. The proposal was raised during the Joint Select Committee meeting on TNTEC. TNTEC General Manager Kevin Ramsook explains so far HDC has introduced this type of power supply in many of its communities. The use of poles versus the use of underground lines and supplying power to the nation was raised during the sitting of the Joint Select Committee meeting on TNTEC. Planning and Development Minister Dr. Botiwari, sitting members sought to highlight the matter as one that fits into the wider development picture as the government seeks to enhance community and city spaces across the country. How do you intend to proceed with this tension between lines, uh, sorry, underground lines versus poles? And how can this issue of cost, etc., be managed in such a way to satisfy what would be an aesthetically more pleasing approach and perhaps more effective and efficient um, in, in connecting especially businesses to underground lines. TNTEC General Manager Kelvin Ramsook explains that his company is encouraging the use of underground lines as so far 94% of HDC projects utilize this type of supply. He, however, notes that incentives have been offered to customers interested in receiving supply from underground systems. There are a lot of benefits to the underground. Aesthetics is one of the benefits, but the biggest benefit is safety. All your infrastructure is really underground. Then, of course, you have an equal benefit of reliability. So um, we continue to do that. We continue to emphasize on our customers. Of course, in the city, and port, in the Port of Spain area, and in the north, um, the majority of work does, in fact, when we have developments, is, is taking place underground. Meanwhile, Mr. Ram says projects have commenced at developing this infrastructure at the various regional corporations and communities. The issue of overhead slash underground is, in fact, engaging our attention. We have started a project in Shogonas. Um, we have to go back and complete it. That is at uh, Montrose. We have also started a project in Arima. And, of course, we will be going into the other towns and cities, as you quite rightly said, where the infrastructure is heavily, heavy overhead lines. But, of course, there are a predominant amount of buildings right, and activity. Um, of course, the issue that will reside in there is cost. Right? So there will be some issue of cost that has to be borne by um, either the corporation or so in order to facilitate the process because the infrastructure already exists and supplies customers. Mr. Ramsook says doing this will also encourage a certain level of health and safety environment for its employees. Kimberly Ram Kalawan, News 4. In other news, less than two months after Prime Minister the Honorable Kamlo Pasad Basasa announced changes to this country's libel and defamation laws, this country has jumped six spots in the World Press Freedom Index rankings. The changes saw the government promise to amend the Libel and Defamation Act to prevent journalists from being charged with criminal libel. International organization Reporters Without Borders compiled the rankings. The annually published report measures the amount of freedom allowed to media workers in each country throughout the world. In the 2011-2012 index, Trinidad and Tobago was ranked 50th in the world for press freedom. In the 2012-2013 edition of the index, Trinidad and Tobago is now ranked 44 out of 179 countries. After the break, Trinidad and Tobago and Jamaica working on making airline merger viable. Welcome back. Education Minister Dr. Tim Gopisingh says he remains confident in this year's secondary entrance assessment exam. He was speaking after Friday's Joint Select Committee meeting. 
As Standard 5 pupils across the nation eagerly await SEA results this year, Education Minister Dr. Tim Gopisingh says he remains optimistic on the level of results expected from this year's examination. The future planning obviously takes into consideration the amount of students writing on a yearly basis and we do have places for all the students. Of course some students will not do as, as well as others and there are areas where we are focusing to lift the standards of performance of these students when they go into these other institutions. So slowly we are moving towards um, improving those that are at the lower end of the academic performance level. But you realize we have made some significant changes in the primary school curriculum which would have impacted upon these students. And therefore as we move into secondary schools there are other areas of technical vocational education and training which will also give some areas of Excellence. With regards to students receiving their results via text message, Minister Gopi Singh says this year additional IT security features have been introduced to safeguard student confidentiality. We have tried to in increase the security and there has been a marked um, um, in-depth analysis and uh, implementation of programs and plans, programs and policies to ensure that the security became watertight. So we have strengthened our IT team and the IT advisors and IT uh, personnel are the ones who looked into that. I can't give you the IT um, aspects of it, but I just know from an overall perspective I was assured that the um, security measures were strongly in place. Meanwhile, Minister Gopi Singh says this year the laptop distribution will continue to all Form 1 students. The Prime Minister had promised that the population we, which we are delivering on, that laptops for every student entering Form 1, we have given over 55,000 already. This year we have probably another 18,000. Uh, we have given 5,000 to teachers, all school supervisors and principals have been given as well and we have a very uh, beautiful uh, IT communication method now between the Ministry of Education and all our principals and supervisors in our schools. So it's no, they no longer have to rely on uh, a memo going to the district office and taking two weeks for them to get it. Kimberly Ram Kalawan, News 4. The governments of Trinidad and Tobago and Jamaica are working together to ensure the Caribbean Airlines Air Jamaica merger continues to strive to be a viable one. This is the promise being given by Minister of Trade, Industry and Investment, Senator the Honorable Vassan Barrett. The government of Trinidad and Tobago is completely and totally committed to making the arrangement work and I believe having um, spent two days with um, Air Jamaica in Jamaica uh, Monday and Tuesday that the government of Jamaica is also truly committed to having this work. Minister Barath says a committee has been set up to review a number of logistical issues still facing the merged airlines. The committee will comprise experts in a number of fields from both countries. They will meet over a two-week period and Minister Barath says one of the things first on the agenda is marketing and branding of the merged airlines. How we would best represent uh, both brands, Caribbean Airlines and uh, Jamaican Airlines, uh, Air Jamaica, um, as essentially one brand to the marketplace. And whether it's a question of having both logos emblazoned on the aircraft uh, publicly for everyone to see, or whether it's really just a question of having a Caribbean Airlines aircraft but with a Jamaican service on certain routes, uh, and that would mean, you know, Jamaican pilots, Jamaican um, stewardesses, food, and so on, that essentially just tweaks the, the product offering to the Jamaican diaspora. Um, those are things that... Um, that the two teams will work out over the next um, two weeks. The Trade and Industry Minister says flights may be ramped up on some routes to regain market share which the airlines lost to low-cost carriers. We have lost market share in many of the, on many of those routes which have subsequently been taken up by um, low-cost carriers like JetBlue. So it's not an easy task. Um, but we are committed, um, having met with uh, Dr. Davies and um, his colleagues, we are committed to ensuring that we um, do increase the levels of frequency on those routes and that we, re that we continue to uh, invest in a brand which is Air Jamaica that we've, we believe to be valuable. Minister Barath suggests the finer points of the issue may be discussed by Prime Minister Kamala Persad Bissessa and her Jamaican counterpart Portia Simpson-Miller 
when they meet in a few weeks. It's a very sensitive matter, and I think it's, dear, it's, a, it's a matter that's dear to both Prime Minister's hearts, so I'm sure that they will have a discussion. I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that it will not be a discussion uh, that will be of any magnitude or of such magnitude that it will take up too much of their time, but uh, certainly I'm, I'm certain that they may have a whisper to each other about it. Gregory McBurney, News 4. Laborers and construction workers aiding in the development of the country now have the opportunity to further their knowledge and skill set. This as Brazilian construction company OAS in collaboration with the University of Trinidad and Tobago and the National Energy Skill Center has opened a worker productivity school in South Trinidad. This ladies and gentlemen is what I term investing in people, increasing opportunity building the brains, unleashing the human potential. This is our first worker productivity school. Persons working on the Point Fortin Highway project in Golconda will soon begin classes at this country's first OAS worker productivity school. The center has been launched by the Minister of Tertiary Education and Skills Training, Senator the Honorable Fazal Karim. Minister Karim says he first observed this school concept during an official visit to Brazil earlier this year and insisted that the concept be brought to Trinidad and Tobago. He explains the school was launched in time for Labor Day 2013 in recognition of the huge role labor plays in this country's development. The minister believes for the country to develop, labor must first develop, particularly in the use of information and communication technology. It will involve e-learning, electronic learning, computers. It will involve blended learning so that you will go on the computer, but you'll also have someone here who will facilitate the teachers. So that's blended face-to-face -face and using the technology. It will involve social learning, what you do and what you interact, how you interact with your colleagues and with those in the community. It will involve as well a collaborative learning and working environment. Some of the courses which will be offered at the school include formwork carpentry, banksmen safety courses, civil construction projects for foremen, and the reading and interpretation of these projects. Students will receive OAS qualification and will also receive Caribbean vocational qualifications or CVQs. Minister Karim is urging other companies to start other worker productivity schools as this can only serve to improve the labor force in this country. Gregory McBurney, News 4. Residents of Hard Bargain are breathing a sigh of relief as the Princess Town Regional Corporation has announced plans to rebuild a crucial bridge which collapsed on Wednesday. The bridge located at 4th Company Road, Hard Bargain, collapsed as a large truck attempted to cross. Councillor for the area, Gowri Rupnarain, says the wooden bridge was closed about three months ago. He adds, however, that some residents continue to use it despite the closure. The new bridge is expected to cost approximately $1 million and construction is expected to begin on Monday. Meanwhile, residents are reminded that vehicles are prohibited from using the temporary walkover, which has been built to allow residents to cross the river to get onto the 4th Company Road. When we come back, our sport report. Stay with us. Sport fans will focus on the Hazley Crawford Stadium this weekend when the National Association of Athletic Administrations hosts the 2013 Senior Open Championships. A large number of the nation's top athletes are expected for the meet, but a cloud hangs over the participation of Olympic gold medalist Keyshawn Walker. The 20-year-old javelin ace is unlikely to compete at this, the final local meet before the World Championships being contested from August 10th to 18th in Moscow, Russia. But a number of his 2012 Olympic teammates will be on show, including bronze medalist Lalon Gordon, Jaren Solomon, Dion Landor, Richard Thompson, Emmanuel Callender, Mark Burns, and Keston Bledman, who will be defending his national 100-meter title. One of the highlight battles on the tracks is expected to be in the 110-meter hurdles, when new national record holder Mikel Thomas is expected to face off against his predecessor, Wayne Davis II. 
Thomas captured the record on June 8 in the U.S., but Davis is the NCAA champion, and he will be keen to regain his record when they hit the tape at the end of their race on Saturday. More news after the break. It was a day of fun and excitement as the Chickland Recreation Ground came alive with pulsating sports and a family day. The event accommodated residents in the community and was chaired by the Minister of the People and Social Development, Dr. The Honorable Glenn Ramadasi. While the country celebrated Labor Day, the residents of Chickland Freeport in central Trinidad took time to participate in sports. Noting how important democracy is in Trinidad and Tobago on this auspicious occasion, Minister of the People and Social Development Dr. Glenn Ramadasing says, we live in a country where everyone's voices can be heard. That is the kind of democracy that the partnership, the people's partnership under our beloved Prime Minister, the Honorable Kamala Prasad Bissessa, continues to propagate in Trinidad and Tobago the right to speak and the right to be listened to, the right to work and the right to fair work and fair working conditions. He adds that the People's Partnership was founded on the principles of hard work and fair pay for hard work. In this context, the minister acknowledged all those who participated in the Labor Day celebrations. So Labor Day finds a special place in our heart and indeed here in Karani Central. Let me say that it is so beautiful to see the young people coming out in their numbers. Give it up for the young people of Karani Central. The minister says their work is to elevate the people of Trinidad and Tobago by supplying their needs. The work of the Ministry of the People is to lift the people of Trinidad and Tobago so that they can rise up the rights of the individual, the social and economic security, universal protection for all. Then it was time for some much fun and excitement. These youngsters were all prepared and ready to go. <laughs> and who could forget the much anticipated needle and thread race? These girls showed their skills finishing this contest with grace and ease. Musical chairs was also on the order of the day, as well as a host of other fun races that would set the mood for the ideal sports and family day. Joseph Lopez, News 4. Well, that's how we wrap up this edition of our News 4 report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited and the Ministry of Communications. I'm Nicola Barreto. Thank you for joining us.